בפנינו את ביתו. מוביל אותנו בחשאיות לקומה החמישית, בבניין ללא מעלית בו הוא מתגורר, בדירה קטנטנה עם אסתר רעייתו. Being on the outside is always better than jail, but it's a virtual jail uh, because I have to be very careful about time and uh, location and uh, what I'm doing. And this thing tracks constantly. And uh, so I have to be aware of everything. כבר בהתחלה חשוב לו להדגיש. בוחר להתראיין אחרי שווידא שזה לא מסכן אותו. הוא מעוניין לפרסם את דבריו. I want to make it very clear before I start though. that I'm not doing anything in violation of my parole guidelines at all. So I want people to be reassured on that score. I specifically invited you here to our home so that people wouldn't see an interview on the street that uh, they would misinterpret as an ambush, that you just uh, happened upon us and you threw a camera up and uh, said talk. <laughs> Why did you decide to talk? There is a, uh, a very important issue that has to be publicized right now. And it's a, a matter of life and death. It doesn't involve politics. It's a very human issue that's a crisis for my wife and myself. When he changes his mind and explains why now, he decided to talk about everything. Several weeks ago, Esther, my wife, had a routine mammogram. And for women who have had breast cancer, which she has had twice, there's nothing routine about mammograms, because you never know. And this also applies to a husband, because his wife is his whole world. And anything that affects her affects him. So she had the mammogram, and uh, the results came back positive for breast cancer, third time. And it's uh, pretty aggressive. And I remember when uh, I was physically mistreated during my interrogations and uh, my ankles were broken, my back was smashed. I, I never got emotional about the whole thing. I was kind of professional about it. But this has completely uh, shaken me. כשהם מקבלים so, את הבשורות, פולארד מבין שהוא חייב I לעדכן את הדרגים הגבוהים ביותר. כדי שיוכל להיות לצד אשתו בטיפולים. So, I immediately contacted the, the Prime Minister, uh, Rosh Hashem Shala, uh, through the Ambassador in Washington, Ron Dermer, and um, a request for me for help. Uh, the help basically has to do with my parole conditions. I can't take care of my wife right now effectively. I'm not mobile. I just can't pick up and go to places. If my wife needs something in the middle of the night, I just can't leave the apartment. So what are you asking? I'm, I asked the Prime Minister, please, if he could intervene directly now and ask President Trump to commute my parole. Given the very good relationship between the two men, Uh, I'm hopeful that the, uh, the president will 
cut my parole, terminate my parole so that I can take care of my wife um, and that we can eventually come home for her recovery. What was his answer? He's going to get involved. He is, he is, I feel confident that he will make that call. He was pretty shocked when he found out what was going on. Did you talk to him? No, I didn't talk to him, but his reaction was conveyed to me. And uh, it was what I assumed it would be. Esther, my wife, uh, has had many dealings with the Prime Minister, so she wasn't somebody who he didn't know. הפעם הוא לא מאשים את ראש הממשלה ולא מדבר על אכזבה. כנראה שהוא מבין שנוכח הנסיבות ההומניטריות, ואולי גם בתזמון הפוליטי הזה, עכשיו יותר מתמיד נתניהו יכול לסייע לו להקל בתנאיו ולהגיע לישראל. And this is one of those situations. And I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, he, will, he will make this call and we can get this horrific parole conditions uh, removed. If not, what is the meaning for you, for Esther? Very difficult. It's, it's going to make uh, a very difficult situation almost impossible. I, mean, I, I want to ask husbands to put themselves in my situation, where you can't really accompany your wife to chemotherapy, which is not a pleasant experience, where in the middle of the night, if she needs something, you can't get up and just go get something. You can't walk out a door because they're chained to an apartment, a small apartment like this. הם מתקיימים בדירה הזו מתרומות של קרובים וחברים, אין להם ביטוח בריאות. לכן הוא מוכן לחשוף את התנאים שבהם הם חיים, כדי שיוכל ללוות את אשתו לטיפולים. I can't imagine at all uh, either the prime minister not making the call and making it an effective call. That's the, that's the point, an effective call. And on the other hand, I can't imagine this particular president um, refusing him. But for many Americans, they see the story as a betrayal in the U.S. So of course. It, that is so different. Well, a lot of people have been misinformed about the case itself. A lot of people think that uh, I was guilty of treason. I never was. Never accused, never convicted of that. But Israel's enemies in this country have so twisted this story and have so misrepresented it that they are using me as a weapon against Israel. And... Do you think president or people around the president understand that? Yes. But maybe he is afraid of the credit that could be of yeah. this kind of move. Uh, there's one thing um, I, I've, I'm sure about in terms of President Trump. Um, he doesn't care about criticism. They have nothing to be afraid of. You know, I've, I've done 30 years, I've paid a price, I'm not asking to get out of anything, I just am asking for consideration, humane consideration. פולארד ממשיך לטעון בתוקף שלא הציע את המידע למדינות אחרות ושפעל ממניעים ציוניים בלבד, שהוא מבחינתו עשה את זה כדי להגן על המדינה ושאז לא הייתה לו כל ברירה. הוא חוזר איתנו גם לרגע ההוא. בשגרירות ארצות הברית, כשהדלתות נסגרות והוא מבין שהוא הולך לכלא. handcuffed me. I looked back at the embassy and all of the, the blinds were closing, like a big eye closing. And I noticed a few people whom I recognized. And I just said to myself, I can't believe they're doing this. And it wasn't really so much for me. It was the message that was being sent out, not just to other agents, 
who might be in a similar situation, God forbid, but to our enemies. Mm -hmm. This is what the Israelis do for their own people? Good. Good. Their loyalty isn't as strong as they say it is. But Rafi Eitan said, we were not supposed to come to the embassy. Yeah, well, the FBI was everywhere. Security was in the front of the house, on top of the house, behind the house. They had a helicopter overhead. Uh, there was no physical way of doing that. And I had warned people that I was living in a death trap. There was no way out, and they didn't care about that. פולארד מבין את ההזדמנות, אבל עבור האמריקנים זו לא עוד מחווה לישראל. הם רואים אותו כבוגד, ולכן מהלך כזה של נשיא טראמפ קשה הרבה יותר. You have to understand that for me, for the past 30 years almost, my wife, Esther, has been fighting for my life. Now I'm fighting for hers. But I need help. אולי באמת נוצרו ההזדמנות, נוצרה ההזדמנות להביאו לארץ, אולי אפילו לפני ה-17 בספטמבר. רק לומר שבעקבות הרעיון מלשכת ראש הממשלה נמסר ישראל נותרה מחויבת להשבת ג'ונתן פולארד, ראש הממשלה ימשיך לפעול עד להשבתו לישראל.